Okay, 336, number 13. This is one of these problems that looks hard, but then it seems easy, but then you find out it's really quite hard. So the height in meters of a ball thrown upward from a building is this equation thing, where t is the time in seconds after releasing the ball. And so during what time interval will the ball be above 40 meters? So following the advice here, uh, what we should do is three, make a diagram to illustrate your problem. That'll make it easier to understand. So, let us start by drawing the building. There's the building. And it's of a given height. There's going to be a person on the building who is going to throw a ball upwards and it's going to follow a parabolic kind of a path like that and it's going to land at some point. And the question is, at what point is it over 30 meters? So if we were to draw an axis here, we would know that the ground is there, the ground is zero, and that'll be t. And as time marches on, the ball follows its path. It's thrown up. This must be some wind here. And it ends up landing down here on the ground. So this point here, if we look at our equation, the equation given here is the height equals a negative 4.9 t squared plus 29.4 t plus 24.3 and that's a bit uh, a bit messy but we can probably deal with that so what it means is if t was zero, if time was zero, in other words, just as the ball is thrown, this expression becomes zero, this one's zero, and we're left with 24.3. So at time zero, it's 24.3. Just so that we know, this will be our y-axis. I'm actually drawing the axis like this. And this point here on the y-axis is actually 24.3. At some point, the ball's going to go up. That's going to be 40 on the y-axis. And at some point, it's going to be above 40. And it's going to fly over like this, and then it's going to be below 40 again. So if we could figure out the coordinates here and here, it's going to be, we'll call that T1. And the coordinate is T1, 40, because it's 40 on the y-axis. And here, it's going to be T2, 40 is the coordinate there because when we go down here that's time 2 that we're looking for and down here is time 1 that we're looking for. So this is a model of this equation as it pertains to this building here and the person throwing it at some point upward and it goes up over 40 meters and then back down over 40 meters and we're looking for this interval when it's above 40 meters. So this stuff has to be greater than 40. So if we write the equation out, h, forget h, 40 is going to have to be less than the stuff, which is negative 4.9t squared plus 29.4t plus 24.3. <clears throat> Now there's no way we're going to try and factor that. You might have an eagle eye and notice that 6 times 4.9 is 29.4, but that doesn't do you any good because 24.3 doesn't factor or help you at all. So we're in fact going to have to use the quadratic formula. So using the quadratic formula, I'm going to push everything over to the left-hand side. So we're going to get, I'm going to write it down here where I've got some space. We're going to add negative 4.9t squared. So 4.9t squared is going to be over there. We're going to subtract this stuff from both sides, so minus 29.4t. And we're going to subtract 24.3 from both sides. So we had the 40 originally and minus the 24.3. And that's all going to be less than 0. <clears throat> so we simplify this a little bit because this is still a bit of a problem. So 4.9t squared minus 29.4t plus 40 minus 24.3 gives us plus 15.7. It's less than zero. <clears throat> so now we have our A and our B and our C. 
that we can use in the quadratic formula, it's going to be rather messy. It's going to be minus b, so let's, let's write the quadratic formula over here just so we can remember it. It's minus b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And plugging these values in, where this is our a and our b and our c, so minus minus 29.4 is 29.4 plus or minus root 29.4 squared minus 4 times a times c, 4 times 4.9 times 15.7 all over 2 times a. I can do that in my head. 2 times 4.9 is 9.8. So for that, of course, we need our calculator because it's going to get messy. So our calculator comes out and we start simplifying this a little bit. So 29.4 plus or minus square root of 29.4 times 29.4, 864.36 minus 4 times 4.9 times 15.7, 307.72 all over 9.8. So if I take that, well, let's see, clear that. So 864.36 minus 307.72 equals that. And I need the square root of that. And this calculator doesn't have a square root function. 29.4 plus or minus the square root of 556.64 over 9.8. So on the number line though, because I I don't have the, the square root function on this, I know that it's going to be in the ballpark of 24 or something like that, so this will be somewhere around 50 over 9.8, so somewhere around 5 and somewhere 5-ish. And if I subtract that, 24 is 5, and, uh, somewhere around <coughs> 1 half. We'll have whatever these two values are, the plus root whatever and the minus root whatever, will give us two values on the number line. And we know it's going to be the span in the middle because we know rationally it's going to be the time when the ball is above those two points. So if we can figure this out, if we have a proper calculator that calculates square roots and we can figure this out, then we can figure out the values on the number line and we know that's the space in between. So we'll say that t is going to be greater than something and less than something, whatever this number is there, whatever that number is there. Sorry, I don't have the exact numbers for you.